when a vinegar ruin and a striped-tailed centipede come to the surface, all hell will break loose. The rainforest is riddled with entrances to the underworld. From one dark gash, like some mythical monster, comes a striped-tailed centipede. Every night, it leaves its subterranean lair on a mission to murder. A hyperactive hunter plowing through the forest on 22 pairs of legs. We think that they'd be getting tripped up all the time, but with each one longer than the previous, they never get tangled. The centipede's speed and mobility are even more impressive when you realize it's almost blind. Its antennae act like all-seeing eyes. Beneath the antennae on either side of the head, the main strike weapons, two modified legs, have become venom claws that deliver a toxic shock. Perched high on a leaf, a grasshopper thinks it's out of harm's way. But the striped-tailed express is hot on its chemical trail and severs a hind leg. Now that's poor defense. The grasshopper really should have jumped clear while it had a chance, because now when the centipede comes back, it's not going to have a leg to stand on. The venom claws now serve as silverware pulling soft flesh from the exoskeleton. Like a discerning diner ripping meat from a lobster tail. Nearby, another denizen of the dark emerges, hungry for blood. With its heavy armor and creeping crab-like walk, the Vinegaroon is a primeval nightmare. Vinegaroons are like B-grade movie idols. I mean, they're just really scary, monster-looking animals. Massive pedipalps ending in crude pincers grab prey in a merciless embrace, then crush it against serrated armor plates. Like all arachnids, the Vinegaroon has eight legs, but only six are used for walking. The first two are sensors that the Vinegaroon taps around like a blind person's cane. Its heavy armor is enough to deter most predators. If that doesn't work, the Vinegaroon mounts a reeking rear guard action. They've got a gland at the base of their tail that is capable of spraying what's essentially vinegar as much as three feet away. They're able to move their tail around, aim it toward the predator, and then spray this mix of acetic acid and caprylic acid. It breaks down an invertebrate's exoskeleton. But will the Vinegaroon's heavy weapons be enough to defeat the striped-tailed centipede? when it attacks head on. Next, underworld demons fight to the death. Then, hardcore mean girls go head to head. And later, ultimate fighters face off. In the dead of night, the rainforest is haunted by underworld demons. A voracious, striped-tailed centipede follows a trail to its next meal. Meanwhile, a vinegaroon waits for its dinner to arrive. The centipede attacks with spiny feet and razor-sharp venom claws. The Vinegaroon wields giant club-like pedipalps, spiked pincers, and serrated plates. Who'll survive the Battle of the Night Terrors? The centipede charges in like a hungry locomotive. 
But the Vinegaroon grabs first. The centipede lashes its body around. Venom claws looking for a way in. The centipede is tough, but this Vinegaroon has it in a really, really tight grip in the pedipalps. It's almost like being caught in a nutcracker. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Even if the centipede manages to get away, he's going to have a terminal headache, and I don't think he's going to get very far. The centipede's legs kick feebly as claw-like chelicery tear into its neck, almost severing the head. Regurgitated digestive juices flood the wound, transforming solid flesh into centipede soup. So it seems that the old adage of live by the sword, die by the sword, is just as applicable to the bug world as anywhere else. The Vinegaroon savors its victory, ferrying its dead foe back to the underworld to feast in peace. In the Dark Ages, life is nasty, brutal, and short. Death can strike at any moment. When an ambly pigeon clashes with a red forest scorpion, the Holy Grail is survival itself. The Ambly Pidget is a rainforest Frankenstein. Part spider, part scorpion. Ambly pigeons are closely related to spiders and vinegar worms. They've got eight legs and eight eyes. It shuns the light, spending its days skulking in crevices or under rocks, emerging after dark to feed. Its armored body is built low to the ground. Lateral grade legs allow it to move in any direction. Two of those limbs have been modified to act as whip-like antennae. extremely sensitive to the movement of air or other vibrations in its vicinity. They're also very sensitive to odors, which is unusual for an arachnid. With as many as 148 joints, these whip-like organs can circle its whole body, keeping a 360-degree lookout. And when it locates prey, it crushes them with multi-pronged pedipalps. Those pedipalps are like huge clubs lined with spikes. The Ambly Pidget will need all its weaponry and heavy armor when it encounters the Red Forest Scorpion. The Red Forest Scorpion is a night stalker who enjoys the thrill of the chase. Scorpions are ultimate hunters. Long, slender pincers lined with fine sensory hairs 
hold prey in a vice-like grip. At the other end, its main strike weapon, a bulbous steam, dispenses fast-acting venom. If you think cyanide is a powerful toxin, some scorpion venoms are actually over 100 times more potent. This kills their prey extremely fast, stone dead. This one's hot on the trail of its next kill. Under its body, feathery organs called pectines have picked up a scent. The scorpion is tapping its pectines on the ground about once every 30th of a second, sensing a chemical trail. The more often it detects the scent, the more accurately it can track the prey. A large ground spider doesn't realize it's on the radar until it's too late. One sting, and the scorpion feasts. But when the Embly Pigeon comes by, the conquest might not be quite so easy. Next, the ultimate grudge match. In the still of the night, an Embly Pigeon prowls for fresh meat. Its long range sensor warns something's coming. The Red Forest Scorpion is also out hunting. Its super sensitive pectines have picked up the whiff of live flesh. When these two knights of the Dark Realm go head to head, only one will survive. The Ambly Pigeon has crushing club-like claws and blinding speed. The Red Forest Scorpion has a lethal stinger and super potent venom. Which one will emerge alive? The Scorpion lies in wait below the ledge. But the Ambly Pigeon's super flexible whip has detected it. The scorpion advances. The Ambly Pigeon sidesteps, then attacks from below. The scorpion grabs a leg. While avoiding the Ambly Pigeon's stiletto tipped clubs, it angles its stinger for a kill shot. If the Ambly Pigot manages to catch a scorpion with those spiked pedipalps, it could crush the living daylights out of it. So it's important that the scorpion gets in a sting as quickly as possible. The Ambly Pigot locks on, attempting to crush its opponent into submission. But the scorpion's tail is free. The scorpion injects its cocktail of tissue-destroying venom. Before it takes effect, the Ambly Pigeon makes one last-ditch attempt to escape. But the Red Forest Scorpion is not about to lose its grip on this meal. Breaking a leg in two, it begins to feed as the venom takes hold. The Ambly Pigeon flatlines. And in a final indignity, this ancient medieval fighter becomes a free-for-all buffet on the forest floor.
In the treacherous world of bugs, there are many ways to meet your doom. When a velvet worm tangles with a harvestman, it's all out chemical warfare. On the moist forest floor, an ancient hunter stalks its prey as it's done for 500 million years. The velvet worm is an all-terrain terror, flowing across uneven ground on hydraulic legs. Each one is tipped with a retractable claw for better grip. Tiny bumps on the body, called papillae, repel water, keeping the worm dry as it navigates its wet, humid world. Each of the wart-like bumps on its body has a bristle at the tip that acts as a mechanoreceptive sensor. What this means is that the velvet worm is constantly monitoring its environment with its skin. It looks harmless enough, but the only soft thing about the velvet worm is its name. They're voracious predators. Velvet worms can grow up to four inches, and they can capture animals right up to their own size. This puts a very large amount of different creatures on their menu list. With a top speed of less than two inches per second, it's not able to chase down a meal. But who needs speed when you possess one of the bug world's strangest and most effective long-range weapons? On either side of its head, modified legs called oral tubes fire twin jets of viscous slime. Caught in the sticky blast, the target is immobilized by biological glue. This slime straitjacket is about 90% water. But as the water evaporates, proteins in the slime start to tangle and form tight chemical bonds. This becomes stringier, stickier, and harder by the second. This is such a cunning natural design. The velvet worm isn't the only wily fighter in the forest. The harvestman also has a few tricks up its very long sleeves. You'd think to look at a harvestman that it's a spider, but these guys aren't spiders at all. They don't have venom, they don't have a sting, they don't produce silk. Harvestmen are pretty much characterized by legs. Those long limbs give it critical clearance in a close fight. And its spiky exoskeleton makes it a tough foe to tackle. And when it comes to victims, the harvestman isn't fussy. Spiked feelers called pedipalps grab and hold the prey while claw-like mouth parts rip and tear at the flesh. And when under attack, the harvestman wields its own chemical weapon. The way many harvestmen defend themselves is with stinky glandular secretions that can spray or ooze onto the predator. When these chemical combatants collide, its stealth and stickiness versus stench on stilts. Next, armored attack versus worm warfare. Then, a callous killer confronts a silent stalker. And later, an armored Amazon takes on a rainforest wrecking ball. In the Central American rainforest, a velvet worm hunts for prey. Close by, 
A long-legged harvestman is also prowling for food. Neither will back down. The velvet worm has slime guns and razor-sharp mouth parts. The harvestman boasts claw-like mandibles and a foul defensive spray. Which one will live to fight another day? This contest is between two very different approaches to survival. Strong offense versus strong defense. Heavy weapons versus heavy armor. With the worm in its sights, the harvestman moves in for the kill. I think the harvestman has lots and lots of advantages, but it's got to get in close. But it's too close. The worm gives it both barrels at point-blank range. The harvestman struggles, but thrashing only tightens its slimy bonds. It's the glue from hell. Now that's what I call chemical warfare. It may go everywhere. Half of it may miss the target, but wow. That is a prey capture technique that's impossible to upstage and very difficult to escape. The harvestman is in serious trouble. All it can do at this point is back off and see if it can groom the glue off. But it's nasty. With its victim pinned and defenseless, the Velvet Worm switches to safe cracker mode, looking for a way into its meal. Like hellish cookie cutters, the powerful mandibles start sawing through the Harvestman's armor. Eventually, the worm injects its toxic saliva. The saliva that the velvet worm is injecting contains mucus and also hydrolytic digestive enzymes that are pre-digesting the food outside of its body. So all it has to do now is sit back and <laughs> suck it up. Things don't always turn out the way you'd expect in the bug realm. You can have all the weapons in the world, but slow and sticky often wins the race. When a black jungle stalker and a black-faced katydid go head to head, dark forces will be unleashed. The rainforest floor is choked with debris. It should be easy to hide in the shadows. But in the bug world, even the shadows can kill. Stalkers give everyone the creeps. And the black jungle stalker is creepy enough to ruin any picnic. It prowls around, stops, and just watches from the shadows, absolutely motionless. The first thing its prey are likely to see is a face full of fangs. Then again, the attack is so quick, so violent, the victim never knows what hit it. The secret to the spider's incredible athleticism lies in its long tapered legs. They're hydraulically operated. A system of valves controls the flow of blood into each limb. When the valve fully opens, the sudden surge pumps the leg up, ready for takeoff. 
This is a spider that can really hurl itself into the air when it goes for a strike. So it can even give low-flying insects a good reason to reconsider their altitude. The black stalker's sleek body is covered with fine hairs. Some, on its long limbs, act as super-sensitive motion detectors that react to the slightest change in even a breath of air. Those long sensory hairs on the spider's legs are so sensitive they can even detect when an insect flaps its wings. The black jungle stalker isn't the only stealthy killer on the forest floor. A terrifying face looms out of the dark with its hideous tooth-like grin and homicidal stare. The black-faced Katie did is a stone-cold psychopath. These katydids have black war paint on their faces. It camouflages them so they look less distinctively like a katydid and instead blend into the background more. This mobile medieval torture chamber is always ready to rumble. No executioner's blade was ever sharp as the blackface's fierce mandibles and its powerful legs and wings are not only superbly camouflaged, they get it out of trouble fast. But what happens when the psychopath and the stalker meet at close quarters? Next, mortal combat on the rainforest floor. Then, heavy hitters go head to head. In the rainforest leaf litter, two warriors prepare to engage in mortal combat. The black jungle stalker is poised to strike. This killer has large fangs and paralyzing venom. The katydid counters with sawtooth limbs and razor-sharp mandibles. Which combination has the winning edge? In this battle, it really comes down to whoever's fastest, whoever has the best angle, whoever has the speed at the last minute, maybe even who starts first, but we're down to it. With its antennae probing, the blackface goes on the offensive. The jungle stalker doesn't demur. It reaches forward. The katydid darts off to rethink its battle plan. It decides to attack again from the side. But with its hydraulic legs, this spider can move any which way. Huge fangs puncture the katydid's protective armor. The black face bucks and kicks, but the stalker's fangs are deep and trigger a ticking time bomb. At this point, the clock is at two minutes to midnight, but the spider still has to be extremely careful of the candidate's spiked legs and mandibles, because if it gets even the slightest chance to use them, it will, even as it draws its final breath. Keeping the katydid's limbs out of harm's way, the stalker maintains its steely grip. The kicks become feeble, and the maniacal grin becomes a death rictus. This is an enormous kill for the black jungle stalker. It's the equivalent of a lion bringing down a zebra single-handedly. This is one mighty hunter. The black jungle stalker feasts. When it's had its fill, 
the leftovers furnish a second banquet. For the bugs of tomorrow. When a mangrove tree crab and a leopard spider cross paths, fate will shape their destiny. Equally at home in tree or sea, the mangrove tree crab is an intrepid adventurer. They're very active, curious animals that are moving over long distances quite far away from water. They're not called tree crabs for nothing. Heavy armor plating, vice-like pincers, and agile legs make this crab a super survivor. The crab is incredibly fast on her feet. They can actually move at three feet a second. And not only do they move forward, but they can move sideways. They're really hard to track for predators. Her nimble limbs also serve as barbed spears that can impale as well as scale. Razor-sharp spines decorate each leg before narrowing to needle points. A single spike can puncture exoskeletons like balloons. Sensory hairs on each leg also assist the crab in scoping out her surroundings while large compound eyes help her size up her prospects. As an omnivorous scavenger, she'll happily feast on flesh. They'll eat both plant material and leafy material, but in addition, any meat that they can get, they go for. But while looking for food, she must keep her gills oxygenated. Failure to hydrate could leave her high and dry. But the mangrove tree crab isn't the only hunter hereabouts. The leopard spider has a supernatural talent for murder. Long legs, a dark gray cloak and dominant signs lend this killer a spectral presence. The leopard spider does all its hunting at night, down on the ground and in the lowest levels of the vegetation. And with those dark velvety legs and stripes, this is a killer that most victims don't spot until it's too late. A leg span of almost four inches, married to explosive speed, is a fatal combination for this grasshopper. That's a typical strike. She didn't flinch a muscle right up until the moment she threw herself onto the grasshopper in a single movement. And not content with just one meal, The leopard is a rapacious hunter who will kill over and over again. Powerful crescent-shaped fangs deliver venom in measured doses. The larger the quarry, the bigger the payload. With her prey impaled, the leopard spider floods the body with a potent brew of digestive juices. The leopard may be celebrating her win now, but when she collides with the mangrove tree crab, which one will run out of luck? Next, armor and claws 
versus Venom and Fang. At the edge of the jungle, a mangrove tree crab has attitude to spare. In close proximity, a leopard spider is a supernatural killer with murder on her mind. When fate throws them together, which one has a destiny with death? The leopard spider's toxic fangs easily decimate prey. But the mangrove tree crab's claws can crush limbs in an instant. Who will deal the fatal blow? In a moonlit clearing, the leopard and the mangrove crab size each other up. The crab, justifiably, looks nervous. This poor crab's eyes look like they're about to pop out of its head. Imagine coming on this big leopard spider. There's no walking away from this situation. The spider strikes early. It misses, but has sensed its opponent's motion. The crab's claws strike out. Bet the crab is scared, but the leopard spider can't be without her own reservations. This is not exactly a risk-free scenario. But the crab would make a superb meal. The leopard lunges. Those velvety legs circling the crab. The spider searches for a chink in the armor, but the crab throws up a foaming diversion. All this foaming at the mouth is really trying to get the spider to back away. It doesn't want the spider's fangs to pierce its carapace, because if it does, the crab is a goner. The crab snaps at the spider pedipalps. To avoid them, the leopard lifts the crab right off the ground and pumps in venom. Once she's impaled her prey, the leopard spider will raise her body up to get the victim off the ground and clamp it between those massive chelicerae. This keeps it from escaping or retaliating. Supremacy secured. The spider carries the corpse to her den before dissolving the innards and slurping up crab chowder. As with any other prey, the leopard spider is going to drain the crab of all of its flesh and leave behind just an empty shell. And why not? Who says a spider can't enjoy a good seafood buffet? In the bug world, fortune favors the brave. For the losers, the odds are overwhelming. 